There's one name that looms as large as any in the history of the program, and that is a man who worked so hard for us for 18 years and created some of the funniest radio that's ever been done anywhere. And that man is Ralph Garman, who joins us on the phone here on the World Famous Show. Hey! Right hey! hey! Mr. Garman? My key card won't work. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing happened to Corolla when he showed up today. He could not get in the building. How are you? I'm well, sir. How are you? Doing great. So happy to hear from you. C- uh, congratulations on the success of the uh, the Ralph Report. I know that that is a tough way to go, is the pay for podcasting, but you have made a success of it, and you're doing great with it, I understand. You're very kind. Yeah, I'm having a blast doing it, but I would not be able to do it if I hadn't put the time in with you guys, especially you, Bean, all those years. Everything I learned about being broadcaster and, and, and being... If I'm good at it at all, it's largely because I learned so much working with you. Sir. I mean, but a little bit for me. <laughs> <laughs> a little. I'm sorry, who's that? <laughs> Dead silence from Ralph. <laughs> um, it's been almost exactly two years since you left the show, and I'm embarrassed that this is the first time that we have had you on the radio, and I'm so happy that we have the chance to hear from you. Well, it's a pleasure to be back, and... Uh, I couldn't let the day go. I was, you know, I was debating on whether to, to call in or not. I didn't want to make it weird for anybody, but sh- I figured if you're going to talk to poor man, for God's sake, <laughs> talk to me. Can you believe that? Can you even believe that happened, Ralph? Uh, what's that station again? That sounds good. The one he's got. <laughs> oh, hey, Ralph, it's Adam. He's looking for an entertainment reporter. So I, I don't know if you want to crap all over the guy. Uh, I know a guy. I know a guy. Do you know when when uh, when I met Adam and when he was my boxing instructor? This is Jimmy speaking. Ralph and Adam lived together in La Crescenta. Oh, that's right. And With Cortland. He, Oh, I went to right. who became the yeah, really we just we emptied out the uh, the uh, condo and, and put everybody on the air. But <laughs> Ralph was there, and Ralph was uh, was in the room when Adam was training me to box in his, in his is house. That right? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I got a roommate that does a ton of voices and is really funny. Yeah. And Jimmy was producing so many bits and wanted so many different voices i said get my roommate ralph in here he'll do the voice yeah. I, w- I will say this that we've never had anybody on this show well we've had some people i shouldn't say that but for the most part we have to go through what the bit's going to be how is it going to end where do you see this going and with ralph garman it was never that he would say i have this and we would go all right and we just let him roll with it because and, he was and always 99% great. And percent of the time, it was great. Agree. And Agreed. when it uh, wasn't great, it might be even better. It was, it was awesome. spectacular. <laughs> and let me tell you this, Ralph, because I've heard from so many listeners uh, this week that are reminiscing and bringing up their favorite bits. The one that I've been brought up so many times was the fist fight with Tom York from Radiohead. Yeah. Which, if I remember correctly, wasn't that... If oh, not the, the, the it first was one, one of the very first things you ever did with us on the air, right? That was the first thing, yeah. It was. I, uh, I was it. Was that or was it with the Mall America? It was that. It was. It was Tony no, York. It first, was. Huh? It was the fit. Yeah. It was the April Fools. Kevin. We pretended that Tom York was in studio. Radiohead was playing in town that night. Ralph Universal, happened. right? Ralph played Tom York. Oh, right. And by the way, Ralph right. did a lot of studying, so he answered the questions as Tom York actually yeah. would have. Mm-hmm. And this is before everyone really was on the internet. You yes. Know? And um, the listeners were, it's funny, because that prank turned into a prank on you, Kevin. Oh, yeah, I know. Because it seemed like it would be a funny prank, and the prank was that Kevin got in an argument with Tom York, uh, uh, in the course, which was actually Ralph Garman, and, and then he punched him in, in the eye, and the concert had to be canceled. <laughs> oh, no. And even the wreck... The fight was between me and Bean. Yeah. Oh, it was Bean. Yes. But oh. even the record company called afterwards and went, what's going on? <laughs> How, why was is real. our artist no there idea. and we don't know about it? Yeah, because Bean we're kept making fun of Tom's wonky eye. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and Tom got so incensed, they, he started to, to throw some blows at Bean's direction, and, and the ca- ca- concert had to be canceled. Yeah. Oh, my God, oh that my was amazing. God. And everyone was mad. <laughs> everyone loved us. <laughs> really mad. Really loved us. <laughs> and I'm going uh, to go against the vi- advice of counsel and against the advice of uh, our program director and general manager at K-Rock, past and present, and say the single greatest moment in the history of the Kevin and Bean Show, was Ralph Garman talking to 
Jacques Chirac, yes. the president of France. Yes, yeah, indeed. The greatest is. moment, and I know we're, again, I, I'm taking the whole show down with me here, Kevin. I'm burning it down because <laughs> I know we're you, not allowed to bring it up. What do you care? What are they going to do? I know. What are they going to do? I know we're not allowed to bring it up. But Ralph, no, no, no. Hold on. We weren't allowed to bring it up with the last company. With uh, with you on the phone, Ralph, your thoughts of, uh, and if you could set up that uh, the idea behind that morning. Well, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was a, t- a tense time in international relationships between France and America because this was during the time when we were still investigating whether uh, Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction or not. And the French were saying we should wait for the NATO inspectors to do their job. And America was saying, no, we're going to go in there and bomb the crap out of this guy. And so we, in our infinite wisdom, thought it would be great to have a French legend, icon, Jerry Lewis, call random people in Paris and try to sway them to the American way of thinking. And then we thought the best way to end the segment would be to try to call the presidential palace and talk to the president, Jacques Chirac. Which was, in the, which was in the yellow pages? or like We, we, just, <laughs> we just found it someplace. It wasn't I like... Think, we I think it was on the back of a bus. Kevin. Could have been. That's where we thought it was an ad. Saying, Could have been. Want to talk a, to Jacques Chirac? Or a bathroom oh. soul. I don't know. Call 1-8 million. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we've called them up expecting, rightfully so, to be uh, hung up on. And insanity happens, and they actually put me through to the uh, the president. And, and, and I just Jerry remember Lewis that second, I remember the second, Ralph. It's about international relationships. <laughs> I remember that second when we got the secretary on the phone, and she said, uh, hold on for the president, please. And the look on your face as you stood there in the studio going, oh, my God, if I'm actually talking to Jacques Chirac, what am I supposed to do? And it was so, in, like you said, you talked for 10 minutes on the phone with this guy. In the voice of Jerry Lewis. And never broke character. And, you, and I know that you were thinking you could yuck it up and make a joke and stuff, but... I mean, what was going through your head that you didn't want to cause an international incident or what? Exactly. I didn't want to be the guy that started the war with France. (laughs) (laughs) So I decided to try to play it as straight as I could without getting too ridiculous because my fear was that, you know, something could actually go bad. And, of course, it did. (laughs) Well, we were so excited when that happened. I mean, we were just, we knew knew in the moment that it was one of the greatest things that we would ever witness. Where is that tape? And uh, I, have a, I have a little piece of it that I'm going to oh, play. That, we, that we've been banned from <laughs> playing? Really yes. It down. Oh, boy. We Short were, time being, baby. We were so excited by it. And, and management came in and said, that never happened. You will never speak of it again. Ever, you, ever, you, no you matter what. Never, you will never acknowledge that it happened. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> And it was soul crushing. I think that's the day I decided to leave the show. <laughs> I mean, it took a long time to, 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 pull, to the trigger. pull the trigger on it. But that's the, we were so upset because we were so proud of what Ralph had done. And I just I couldn't believe that we, we had to pretend it didn't happen. But I'm going to play a little piece of the tape here right now. Yes. Because right? I happen to have it. Hello, nice French lady. How are you? Still Jerry Lewis holding here. <laughs> Is that uh, Jerry Lewis? Okay. Uh, I passed it to the president. He is just right now here. Oh, thank you. Oh, hold on one second. Oh, <laughs> President Girac. Jacques Chirac speaking. President Jerry Lewis here from the United uh, States of America. May I be sh- can I be sure that you are Jerry Lewis speaking? I don't know how I can ma- make you not sure, sir. What, <laughs> I, what can I do for you to make you think that it's me? No, I recognize your voice. Oh, excellent, then. And no doubt about that. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so Jacques Chirac is now dead. Jerry Lewis is now dead. As a result of this call? <laughs> no, they, <laughs> no, both just, they just uh, aged out. But ladies and gentlemen, the great Ralph Garvin. Hey, 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 hey. And you can find him at theralphreport.com. You can subscribe. It's very cheap and very good on Patreon. Ralph, this would not have been a, it would not have felt like a complete celebration without having the opportunity to thank you for your many, many years of service on the show. We owe a lot of our success to you, and I'll definitely be mentioning you in the Hall of Fame speech tomorrow night. Well, I got to tell you, sir, I mean, I think Jimmy and Adam can both attest to this, is that you guys were always egoless when it came to giving us room to do our stuff, and you were more than willing to share the spotlight and give up your time and energy and let us get out there and and do what we did with no concern about how much airtime we were taking up. If it was funny, you guys put it on the air, and I know very few people, not only in radio, but in the entire entertainment industry who have, have that little ego just for the sake of making the best product they can make, and it was remarkable being how you would uh, share your, your airtime with uh, folks like myself. 
Why, like I said earlier, why not let people who are more talented than we are do the hard work on the show? That's just how I look at it. You know, we look good when, when the show is good. So, well, thank a you. lot of guys have uh, egos that don't uh, think that way, and you guys were always remarkable to me, and, and I thank you so much for all the opportunities you guys gave me. You bet, man. Thanks for calling in. Continued success. Let's keep in touch, okay? Listen, best of luck in your next adventure, sir. I'm looking thank forward you, to good things for you, okay? Appreciate it. Bye-bye now. Take care. Right, the great Ralph Garman. Ralph Garman, everybody. <laughs> 